So what I'm here today to help you do is to see something that you normally look at. It's all around you. Now for this situation, this is going to be my definition of typography, to include letter forms that are hand painted. But most of you, when I say letter forms or typefaces, you probably look, think about this drop down menu here. But there's more to it than that. So uh, 2,000 years ago, this is what letter forms look like in Imperial Rome. And these are, inscriptional, um, these are inscriptions on the inside of burial tombs. And if you notice, the letter forms look similar to what we have today, but some of them are quite different. Yet all of these have different tones because they have different styles. 2,000 years ago, and carved in stone. So the top image looks a little bit like a typeface we have today called copper plate. And it's got what we call wedge serif. So it's got these triangular things on the end of the letter forms. And the one below it has a different feeling. It's got what we call rounded terminals. So all the ends are round and it feels a bit more friendly, kind of like the typeface Comic Sans. So what would happen 2,000 years ago is somebody would have a message that they wanted to say. They'd give it to somebody else to carve, to paint on the, the, the stone and then carve out. So it was always somebody else's message that you had to figure out what they were saying. And as you can see at the bottom of that picture, they did a pretty good job of it. Today, not so much. <laughs> Pretty good, huh? Yeah, we need to work on it a little bit. One of my favorite sites. Glad you get it. So letter forms actually did transform quite a bit for 1,500 years. So from about 2,000 years ago to about, 1500, to about 500 years ago, for a period of 1,500 years, they stretched and condensed and, and moved and got squarish and got loopy-ish. And they gradually got more and more condensed and they were trying to fit more on a page. Readability, not so important. These aren't really meant to be read. They're hard to read when you squeeze so much on a page. So they would use space to say, hey, this is important. Look at what's coming next. Or they'd use color. Or they'd use squiggles. And squiggles started to mean that, well, it's something important. So these are images from Spain from around 14, in the 1400s. And the bottom image says, Te Igatur Clementissima Pater. It's one of my all-time favorite lettering examples. Like, that's just crazy letters, right? And it's not meant to be read. It's meant to be looked at. Think of it as a coffee table book rather than a mystery novel. Two different experiences with how you see typography. So in the 1600s in the Netherlands and Belgium, they said, oh, you know, OK, if a swooshy thing means important, and my document's really important, I'm going to add a lot of swooshy things. So it's really important. So when you look at it, you'll be able to tell. Well, as you can see, it kind of gets out of hand. And this is the beginning of the Rococo period, and it did. But reading it wasn't as important as looking at it. How did, what was the tone? How did it feel when you looked at it? A modern example of this is a typeface called Restraint. And this typeface works like Scrabble letters, so it can work vertically and horizontally. But you can also add squiggles onto it to make it more important, except this is readable, and those other ones weren't. So these are images from London and Paris from 1800, and then the lower one from 1900. And the idea that advertising is all around you and all pervasive, honey, that's been going on for years, right? So as you can see, even 200 years ago, you had all these voices screaming at you in different tones, trying to get you to pay attention. My favorites are these. I love the amateur ones. And would you get your oil changed at that place? Well, if you only had 1395, probably, yeah. And really, I mean, you gotta give Mr. C credit. They didn't have enough Bs and Rs. So they made them out of peas. That's pretty cool. God bless America. <laughs> but my favorite example of how technology can change the tone are these prostitutes calling cards from London. So in the phone boxes there, they have cards that are about the size of an index card. And these look like somebody was sitting around in lingerie, I'm sure, with a magic marker writing on these index cards. However, these are offset printed in runs of about 10,000. So their technology is trying to communicate this amateur look, but it's not really true. So House Industries is one of my favorite foundries, and they do amazing things with the whole retro kind of feel. So they can do things from the 1950s and 60s, that feeling, but they also do stuff from their era, their childhood era of the 70s, and they make letters out of slime, which is pretty cool as well. Um, one of the more interesting typefaces in the past 10 years is Clearview Highway. And this is from Terminal Design. And what James Montalbano did was he was looking at all the highway signs and realizing they're not exactly all that easy to read. 
So what he did was he changed the letter forms. And if you squint your eyes, you can really see a difference between these two words. So he opened up the insides of the letters, made them actually feel a bit more airy. And they even did research on how the light bounces off of them at night. And when you're going along a highway at night on a rainy day, that makes a rainy night, then that makes a big difference. So readability and legibility are huge issues for that. And these are before and after examples, and you can see that readability really does help. One of the interesting things about this is BC is one of the places that actually has adopted this typeface. So as the new signs start coming in, you're going to see this typeface, and you will notice they're easier to read. But my favorite typeface, and I get that question a lot, I usually say all of them, but I'm going to tell you the real favorite typeface, which is twin. And these two designers did a whole bunch of sketches, had lots of different letter forms, couldn't figure out how to group them. So what they did was they paired it with the weather of Minneapolis St. Paul. So if it is warm, it will be loopy. If it is windy, they'll be a bit weird. If it's cold, they'll have really sturdy serifs. That's pretty cool. It's a typeface that communicates the weather. <laughs> so hopefully, after this, you will actually see typography. Thank you.